This is the Meet Referee Training for Midlake Dive League. This is training for parents and coaches too on how to be a meet referee for our dive meets. Our goals in Midlake Dive League are safety, skills, and fun. Our league is a novice league and our goal is to introduce young people to diving and encourage their enjoyment of it while it's safe and positive. At every dive meet, we need an announcer to call out the diver names and their dives that they're performing, keep the meet moving forward. We need qualified judges to judge our divers, scorers to record and calculate the judges' scores. And at every meet, we should have a meet referee who can make rulings on it, various infractions and deductions and help with the scoring uh, if issues come up. So who can be a meet referee? We ask that a parent who has judged dives for at least three Midlakes meets, including senior divers, not just the little ones, or it could be a head coach from either team, um, but both teams should approve the choice. It could also be an external dive official, for instance, a high school or club coach who has become familiar with our Midlakes rules and knows uh, the few things that we do differently from basic USA diving rules. At the meet, um, before it starts, it'd be great if the meet referee can review all the dive sheets for errors. Sometimes there's not always time for that, but if you can give a quick scan and look for things, that is very helpful. The meet referee should hold the judges meeting before the meet begins, meeting with all the judges and reviewing um, judging expectations. There may be an instance where you need to rule on a swimwear exception where a diver is not wearing non-standard swimwear and you need to decide if they'll be allowed to compete or not. And of course, safety being one of our top priorities, we need to identify and resolve any safety issues. Um, could be thunder and lightning, noisy activity nearby that's distracting to the drivers, uh, uh, problems with the diving board, etc. During the meet, the meet referee rules on changes that are requested at the diving board and may also need to manage external distractions such as noise. The meet referee also watches every single dive for infractions such as box and failed dives and looks for potential penalties that may result in maximum scores on a dive. We'll get into more of that in a bit. So again, diving deeper on before the meet activities. If the meet referee has time to review all the dive sheets, this is what you'd be looking for. Any repeated dives. A diver may not do the same dive number, even if it's done in a different position. For instance, you can't do uh, the 101 forward dive in both a tuck and a pike. They count as the same dive, even if they're done slightly differently. If a coach had to make some last minute changes to a sheet and hand wrote in the changes, you'll need to double check and make sure the degree of difficulty has been adjusted accordingly to match the new dive. A degree of difficulty sheet should be available at the scoring table with a list of all DDs for all dives. Another thing you might look for in the dive sheets is uh, the number of groups and to make sure the divers have enough dives from different groups as they're marked on the sheets. Also before the meet, uh, we expect that most divers who have a swimmer exception will put in a ex swimmer exception request to the Midlakes dive representatives. Uh, if that's not been done ahead of time, then the meet referee may need to rule on a swimwear exception. For our purposes at Midlakes, basically men's suits need to be in one piece only, cannot extend below the knees, nor go above the navel. For women's suits, again, also not below the knees and not above the neck um, or past the shoulders. For all, both men's and women's suits, keeping in mind modest, uh, modesty and decency, and there should be no zippers or other fasteners. This means no tie backs and no drawstrings, for instance, on board shorts or um, even jammers. If they have drawstrings, they should be tucking them in. The thickness of the suit should be less than 0.8 millimeters and should follow the body shape. So this means no t-shirt 
over the swimsuit. If a diver, male, female, or non-binary, wishes to wear swimmer that does not meet these standards, for instance, they would like to wear a rash guard um, or a sport bra and board shorts, they can request a swimmer exception before the meet begins. Again, we expect that most of these will be done by email to Midlakes Diving or through our Midlakes Swimmer exception request. But the meet referee may also be asked to do this, and it should happen at least 15 minutes before the meet begins. At the meet, if you're asked to rule on a swimmer exception, determine if there's a good reason for it. Uh, basically, is the swimwear decent? Is the swimwear essentially form-fitting? And is the exception that they're requesting fair to the other divers? If the reason is just for sunscreen, then probably the answer is no. If the reason is for a body image or um, for instance, the diver has a, a rash that is non-contagious, but they're uncomfortable displaying it. That would be a good reason. Again, if the exception is granted, the meet referee should notify Midlakes Dive Reps at midlakesdiving at gmail.com to explain the exception. Before the meeting, the meet referee will call for the judges meeting. So you'll have the announcers call over all the judges about 10 to 15 minutes before the meet starts, uh, maybe while the last group is um, warming up. There's a script available for running the judges meeting on the Midlakes Dive website on the forms page. Essentially, you'll be talking through logistics such as the diver asking to repeat the dive. Totally okay. Diver may always know what dive they're performing. The announcer may ask judges to repeat their scores. So explain to the judges what that looks like. Uh, you'll discuss fairness, consistency, and complexity, and advising judges to judge what they saw in the dive and not how the diver appeared before they started the dive, whether they were really friendly and smiley and winking at the judges, really scared and uncomfortable, but then they did well, so the judges kind of want to bump it up, or if they looked awkward or just plain cute. Um, none of those things count, only what the dive actually looks like. And you'll talk to the judges about how the procedure will go for a balk or failed dive and other common infractions and max scores. Additionally, at the judges meeting, you'll give just a mini training refresher talking about the three parts of the dive, the things to look for in the dive, height and elevation, power, um, accuracy, really locked in tight. Um, elegant motion and the completion of each position and rotations and twists and under rotation over rotation, things like that. So hopefully the judges have all taken the judge training and it's great to just level set everybody with the judges meeting. Great, on to during the meet. This is the part where you've got to be paying attention. So a uh, diver or dive coach might ask for a change of the dive when the diver gets to the board and they hear the dive get announced. The diver may have thought that the coach put in something different and then they realize they've got to do what the announcer asked and they're not comfortable with it. So what they can do is change the position of the dive. For instance, uh, if it's a forward dive, um, dive 101, and they want to do a pike instead of a tuck, no problem. Uh, the degree of difficulty will either stay the same or go down to match the new position. So it can't go up. So if they uh, want to do a tuck instead of a pike, the degree of difficulty will go down. If they want to do a pike instead of a tuck, the degree of difficulty will not go up. They may not change the dive number to do a completely different dive. During the meet, you'll be paying attention for safety and noise. Some clubs have a second activity pool or a nearby playground area. And if the occupants in those areas are super distracting, blowing whistles, throwing objects that come into the diver's sight line, screaming, meet referee should ask the announcer to pause the meet. And then the meet referee or lifeguard can get the activity area under control. 
Occasionally, you may find a significant distraction occurs very suddenly while the diver is executing the dive. Uh, for instance, uh, nearby sirens go off uh, for emergency vehicles, or a bee uh, lands or is buzzing near the diver, distracting them, uh, or any other sudden loud noise. If this results in a balk, we don't need to call the balk. We can just allow the diver to start over with no penalty after they collect themselves. You may even have them take a minute to gather themselves and change the dive order and dive a couple places later until they feel settled and can continue. For meat safety, safety procedures vary by pool. And basically the lifeguard on deck is the authority. They'll make the call about thunder and lightning or other uh, general safety issues. Uh, if you notice any unsafe actions being taken by athletes or spectators, people running, please ask the lifeguard or the announcer to make an announcement. Uh, this isn't your job. You don't have to be the police, but you are to be paying attention for safety issues. And again, we've talked about nearby noise that may be distracting to the divers and having the lifeguard or announcer ask for quiet during the meet. Spectators really shouldn't be your problem, but sometimes they are. Spectators should just be doing that watching the meet and they should not be talking to or interfering with scorers, judges, coaches, or divers. If it's necessary, you have the authority to ask a spectator to go sit down or even leave. And you can ask the announcer to remind the spectators to clap for every diver and not just their own athletes because you really want everybody to feel supported and have a great time. So during the meet, this may be the part you're most nervous about how to call the infractions and deductions. This is probably the biggest part of your duty, so we'll go into it in a little bit more depth here. Um, your goal is to be fair. Make sure you're consistent in applying the rules for every dive. Uh, you may not be the most qualified person on deck, so you may need some external expertise. You can ask for some help from coaches. Um, or other experienced judges, or even um, maybe guest officials that you have from another club. Conflict resolution. Uh, if coaches have an issue with uh, a call that you made, they can discuss it with you after the meet. Uh, while the divers are at the board is not the time to get into a discussion of what was right and what should have been called. So things that you're looking for on every single dive are box and failed dives. A balk is when the diver starts, stops, and restarts the dive. This can happen either when they're facing forward or even in the backward facing position. If a diver does balk, there's a two point deduction at the scoring table that's assessed to each judge's score. For instance, if the judges score four, four and a half, and five, then the scoring table should score two, two and a half, and three. So the judges will hold up their normal scores just as they would and disregard the fact that there was a ball. Our eight and under and 10 and under divers do not have any penalty for box. They're just learning and we really just want them to gain mastery of their bodies and their diving. Um, so you, may ask, you might ask the scores to write down Bach on the sheet so that the coaches can talk about the dive with the diver at a future practice, but they won't be penalized at the board. A failed dive. Well, did the diver very obviously fail the dive? Did they, for instance, do the wrong dive, like they did a jump instead of a dive? Or did they fully do the wrong rotation, wrong number of rotations or twists? For instance, they were supposed to do a one and a half and only completed one rotation. Did they enter the water with the wrong body part? For instance, they landed uh, with their hands in first when they were supposed to be feet first, or uh, maybe it looked like a cannonball and they landed with their bottom instead of their feet. That would be a failed dive. You know, it's hard to tell these young kids that they've failed. Uh, the good news is that eight and under divers are the only ones who are allowed to redo the dive. And they can do that one time with no penalty. If they fail it a second time, there will be no score. For a failed dive, the meat ref just calls out no score. We don't yell out fail and 
uh, the judges just won't hold up scores. Ask the scoring table to write zeros and uh, not fail on the dive sheet. No one wants to see that. The coach and diver will understand when they look at the sheet later and they see the zeros. Again, we understand that meet referees vary in their experience. Uh, if you've got a twist dive uh, or a dive with extra rotations and you don't feel comfortable if you would know what that looks like because you're pretty new to sport of diving and you've only um, watched a few meets so far and judged at a few meets, then you can ask the coaches to assist you. Uh, just let them or an experienced judge make sure they watch it with you and confirm whether or not it's a failed dive. And it's okay to defer to a coach. Um, they've probably done the same dive in their own competitions. So some deductions and max scores are really easy to see and others require extra training. Here are a few of the easy ones. A coach assisted dive. This is where the coach physically or audibly helps the diver. Um, so that maybe they're holding them while they uh, go in so that they go in straight, or maybe they call out to them while they're in the air so they won't over-rotate. If this happens, it is a max score of two. And you'll just say, max score two, and the judges may score up to two points. Similar for lineups. This is where the diver stands at the edge of the board and just falls in. There's no knee lift or push off. Uh, this will be very common for brand new divers. And a max score again is two. The egg roll is a skill where the diver sits at the edge of the board and just simply rotates and tumbles in. Um, and this helps them learn the sensation of rotation before they learn to do flips in the air. And again, the max score is two. Something to watch for also in every dive is whether the diver ends with their arms oriented correctly. So if the diver should enter in feet first, then their arms should be down by their sides. If the arms come up above the shoulders, then the max score will be four and a half. Jumps are, although they are a foot first entry, are not a dive. And we do these with a hands in a um, locked position above the head. So this would not get the max score. If the diver performs a hands first dive, but their hands don't enter first, for instance, they end up with their head and their hands end up by their side, the max score would still be four and a half. It would be a failed dive if another body part enters first, for instance, feet, knees, bottom, back, et cetera. Dives that lack a three-step hurdle will have a max score of four. So a dive could have four or five steps, that's fine but it must have a minimum of three steps. That's our mid-lakes standard. If a dive starts at the, if a diver starts at the end of the board in the forward position and raises a knee and then goes in, that's called the standing hurdle. They didn't take any steps, it's a max four. If they took only one step or like one and a half step with a knee lift, then they enter again, max four. And then we've also talked about the lineup where they stand at the board, there's no knee lift, and they just fall into the water. That one's the max two that we talked about earlier. A break in position. This is when the diver is supposed to execute one position, for instance, tuck, and instead broke the position and it looked wrong. You'll see this more often in straight dives. If the diver just clearly did the wrong position, like they didn't look like a pike at all and it was only a tuck, then this would actually be a failed dive with no score. But if it's just a break in position, for instance, the body was folded partially when they were supposed to be straight or they tucked their knees when they were supposed to be straight um, or they really had almost no fold in the body at all and they were supposed to be in a pike position, you can call a break in position and that's a max four on the dive. So again, during the meet, if the diver was supposed to be straight, but they look like this, that would be a break in position. If they look like that, um, it's a max four. And again, if they were supposed to be straight, but they look like this, clearly in a tucked position, then it's a failed dive, no score. 
Hopefully these examples are helpful. Now we come to the back dive half twist. Dive 5211, the back dive half twist, is one you'll want to listen for as the meet referee because this one gets a lot of deductions or max scores. The reason for this is a high, it has a high degree of difficulty, 1.8. It's among the highest for all the dives that the kids are able to do at this level. It's not a dive that most divers do in high school or college. It's really hard to do it well. The way the dive looks is it begins as a back dive where the diver leaves the board backwards with their hips facing forward. The diver is then to twist in the air while maintaining a straight position and then enter the water as a forward dive. So that's the half twist part. And they should be keeping again a straight body throughout the execution of the dive. So why do we use this dive in mid lakes diving so much if it's really hard to do? Our youngest age groups only need two dive groups, just forward and backward to compete in the meet. As they age up and get to maybe an A diver level, then they need to add a third dive group. When you add a third dive group, this means including either a, in addition to forward and backward, a reverse, an inward, or a twisting dive. Reverse dives are intimidating for novice divers and even intermediate divers. And so we're unlikely to have ever have a, a brand new diver learn a reverse. The inward dives can also be intimidating for kids. And so that leaves us with twists. We found that the back dive half twist, 5211, is a twist dive that a young diver can kind of do since it starts backwards, but basically twists into that less intimidating forward dive. Again, because it's such a hard dive to do and especially hard for new judges to properly evaluate, uh, we have the meet referee manage the deductions um, with a special set of deductions just for this dive. So the meet referee needs to pay really close attention so that you can be fair to all divers. You can't call a deduction for one diver and not another that look exactly the same. So here are the three deductions or max scores. If the diver's feet move on the board prior to lifting off into the back dive, or if the diver's feet start twisted and not facing right back toward the ladder, then the max score will be two. Now, if the diver's hips twist on the board before they lift off the board into the back dive, the max score will be three. Many times you'll see uh, one of the knees move out to the side, or you'll see the, the shoulders already rotating um, and we're looking for the hips twisting as well before they actually leave the board. That's a max three. Now this one's trickier to tell. Um, if you feel like the diver fell backwards to get into the twisting positions, they sort of lean way back off the board and then to, it's sort of like cheating to get into that twisting position rather than going up into a back dive like they're supposed to. And the max score on that is four. If you're in doubt, we give the benefit to the diver. Let's go to the videotape. Wait, video replay? But we don't video the meets. Again, some dives are really tricky to judge. So you may want to have your phone out and record a dive when the announcer calls it because it kind of sounds complicated. So for instance, if they call out a forward one and a half somersault with a one half twist or pretty much all the back dive half twists. I like to take a video. Um, you need to, if you do this, make sure your phone is positioned toward the diver, but you are watching the diver with your own eyes. We're gonna use the video for backup if you do this. So if you feel comfortable making the call, fail dive, max score three, just go ahead and make it and don't take the extra time to check the video. But if you do feel like the dive was questionable and you're not certain on your feeling about how to score it, then you can ask the judges to wait until you check the video. You might ask a coach if they saw something and if nobody is sure, then quickly open and check the video you just took. And then you can advise the judges and the announcer if it was a failed dive or if it had a max score. And if it was fine, 
I mean, even if it was ugly, you tell the judges it was legal and they can go ahead and continue scoring it as they saw it. Um, some examples of a more failed dives is it might have been over twisted or under twisted by more than a quarter rotation. Um, the back dive half twist, if you weren't sure if they leave, if they turn their hips before leaving the board, again, you might look check the video for that. All right, we've covered a lot. Have you got it all figured out? Do a quick review. Here are some of the most common exceptions. Jumps. Jumps should be with a straight body. Um, and a jump could actually have a tuck or a, or a pike added, but generally straight, but always feet first with the hands up. If they drop their hands below their shoulders, it's a max four and a half. Egg roll and the lineup, we've talked about those, max 2.0. Coach assisted dive, also a max 2.0. The back dive half twist. Again, that extra dive that we add for divers that don't have enough variety in their portfolio will have max scores based on the feet moving, 2.0, hips moving, three, and falling backward, four. You might also hear free position for twisting dives. And in these, the diver may use their arms to generate rotation as long as the arms end up by their sides for a foot first entry and overhead for a hands first entry. There's no deduction for free position with their arms, but you do need to watch for the arms um, in the incorrect position. Balk, this is pretty uncommon, but you'll, you might see it, you know, once per meet, occasionally a couple times. Again, the diver stopped and restarted. The eights and tens are allowed to redo the dive with no penalty and everyone else gets two points off each judge score. A failed dive where the diver did the wrong dive, uh, they did the wrong position, the wrong dive, or a wrong body part ended the water, entered the water first, such as the bottom or the back, then being just no score. Watching for the forward dives, having at least a three-step approach, max four, for um, dives that included a knee lift, but didn't have three steps, max two if it was a lineup with no uh, hurdle whatsoever. Talk about the arms and the broken position where the divers left their assigned position. They, were, they had their knees tucked when it should have been totally straight. And it's your judgment call on whether it results in a failed dive or a scoring deduction of a max 4.0. We have this judging chart, it should be available at every meet at the scoring table. Uh, as a meet referee, I like to have one in my hand while I'm watching the meet. And the judges should also have them at their seats. This covers all of the deductions and issues that we just talked about. So some people are still nervous about being meet referee after the training. Do you have to do it? your team really needs you to volunteer. It takes a lot of practice to become confident in judging and even more practice to be comfortable as a meet referee. The only way to get the practice is to do it. It's okay to be nervous, just give it a go and it gets easier over time. What should you do if you think you messed up? Did you miss announcing a maximum score? If it's not too late, you can ask the judges to rescore the dive. If everyone's moved on, then don't worry about it. This is a fun summer recreational league. If a coach or a parent approaches you later, just apologize and admit that mistakes happen. Every referee, umpire out there in every sport has had a bad call. Don't worry about it. Most likely it did not have a high impact on the scoring. It again, remind the coaches and the parents that this is a summer fun league and invite the parents to take meet referee training. Maybe they can be the one making the call next time. Again, if you're ever uncomfortable with evaluating a dive, you can ask the coaches um, if they saw their diver do the dive correctly. Um, for rotations, one easy way to remember them is that round numbers, like one somersault, two somersaults, go in feet first. Any half numbers, one and a half somersaults, they'll go in hands first. Twists can also get confusing for new judges. Um, basically, round numbers end up facing the same way from how they started, toward or away from the board. 
and a half number will end up facing the opposite way. As you know, during the meet, the scoring table is working furiously behind the scenes and calculating the scores for each dive as the meet moves along. So the announcer calls out the diver's name, their club, and the dive to be performed. Diver executes the dive. The judges rate the dive with the dive scorecards, and the announcer collects the scores. And then the announcer moves on to calling out for the next diver. And meanwhile, the scores are have tabulated the scores and multiplying by the degree of difficulty, and then cumulatively adding all the scores for all the dives to get to the final scoring total for the each diver. Sometimes the scoring table will have an issue and the meet referee will be asked to weigh in. If this happens, just ask the announcer to pause the meet, don't have any additional divers, continue until you can help the scoring table resolve the issue. At the end of the meet, the scoring table should tabulate the meet results on one of these dual meet score sheets. If there's any questions, meet referee can assist the scoring table and making sure that the A sheet is used for all the A divers, the B sheets for the B divers, and that the home and away scores tally up correctly. Again, the scoring table should have this under control, but if there's any questions, you may need to check in. Okay, be confident, meet ref. Don't be nervous, mistakes happen. If you're not sure, just give the benefit to the diver. Remember, being a meet referee is the best seat at the pool. You're in on everything, and meets can't happen without you. We so appreciate you taking this training. You are now able to volunteer as a meet referee. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us at midlakesdiving at gmail.com. Enjoy the season and have a great time. Thank you so much for participating.